What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is The Locker Room, episode 9 of season 6 of the GBA, as we are team building for the Pittsburgh Piratidas and their coach, Old Man Tough. Now, uh, I'm on the longest losing streak I've ever had in my Pokemon career, uh, both professional and casual. I cannot recall a time where I've lost five in a row, even in tournament play, and it sucks. And I really want to get it back against Tup, who is doing phenomenally this season. He's actually number one in our division right now. So I need to take him down a peg. I need to bring myself up a peg to get myself back into this playoff race. Because it's uh, it's crazy right now. I, I really need this win. Um, and I really hope I can get it here. Tup has a very scary team, a very good record. And he's a very difficult to predict player at times. So I need to try and dig deep to predict what he's going to bring this week and try and use that to my advantage. Fortunately, if history is on my side, uh, I've actually never lost to Tup. We didn't play against each other at all in season four, um, except in the All-Star game when I went 2-0 against him in the All-Star games. Then the next season, I went 2-0 against him. So, and then I've beaten him already this season also. So my record against him is 5-0. Uh, we're hoping to... Uh, that's Tup telling me good morning. Oh, thank you, Tup. That's really sweet of you. I need to tell him I'm getting an energy drink because I am. Okay. So uh, let's go into the team builder a little bit here, shall we? Boom. And pull up the team we're bringing this week. We're bringing Zap Zap, the red one, Decisions, DDG, Prince, and Hugh Grant this week. Hugh Grant the Grand Bull, the red one making his first appearance since his trade for Manaphy, who was a Pokemon who came to this match last time we battled Tup. Uh, he has not made any changes to his roster. Uh, you can see the two 11 sets of Mon that we have drafted on the left and right side of the screen. Mine, in case you are wondering, is Entei, Latias, Cresselia, Zapdos, Nidoking, Mega Absol, Grand Bull, Metagross, Miss Magus, Ditto, and Regirock. Uh, on the right, his unchanged Pokemon from last time are Excadrill, Rotom Heat, Winston, Heracross, Azelf, Mega Pidgeot, Tentacruel, Tangrowth, Frostlass, Licky Licky, and Lipard. So, let's kind of go over, as you guys know, that I like to do uh, the tiering of things a little bit here. So, uh, Excadrill, he's brought it to every game. It's pretty much, maybe he didn't bring it one time. It is his primary sweeper. It can be very difficult to deal with in the sand because you don't immediately know it's set. Um, and it has very good coverage to round out what would otherwise be a pretty difficult Pokemon to wall. Rotom H is, uh, I'm predicting, a bring because Decisions otherwise kind of wrecks his team. Hippowdon, of course, can switch in, survive a three-hit KO, but doesn't really want to be burned because that makes it a lot easier for me to deal with him. Heracross, I'm predicting, is a very likely bring. He brought it before. It wrecks my whole team except for one Pokemon, and so, and we'll get into that. Azelf, I predict, is a likely bring. He brought it last time. It has great coverage. It's very fast. It can be, uh, uh, specially or physically offensive and it's a pretty big threat in those regards it could potentially be a set a uh, rock setter could be a sash leader so it does leave him a lot of options the mega pidgeot he didn't bring it last time it doesn't have an amazing matchup against my team but it does kind of force my hand a little bit in a few ways and if he thinks that i didn't want to bring certain pokemon just to counter it then he might bring it just because otherwise it can wreak some havoc on my team um, the Tentacruel, a pretty likely bring. I don't know that he'll bring it again. Last time he brought it against me, he brought an offensive variant. And, uh, that's not bad. It, it takes away from the fact that a lot of people play around Tentacruel like it's a very passive Pokemon. It doesn't have to be. If it's running, uh, full speed, it can outspeed my Entei. And, uh, otherwise it's a pretty decent wall to certain Pokemon. Um, and... You know, there's a good chance he brings it, but it's not the only Pokemon he could bring for some of the purposes. The big thing is that his team is very weak to water, especially the top three Pokemon, which are pretty much sure brings. And uh, the other likely Pokemon I think he brings don't resist water, so I think he needs a water resist. However, that doesn't need to be Tentacruel. That can also be the Tangrowth. However, unfortunately, most of my Pokemon aren't going to be learning physical water moves, they're going to be learning special water moves, and if they have even a single other special attacking move, that can mean uh, a lot of problems for the Tangrowth. 
I could run Assault Vest, but unfortunately it's not able to wall the decisions, so I think that's probably why I think it's more likely that he brings Tentacruel over the Tangrowth. Um, this is kind of organized in order of like the, that I think he'll bring them, but the thing is, is I don't think he's going to run Hyper Offense, so it's not like he's just going to... If he brings the top six, that's... I mean, that's really offensive. He's only got two kind of Wally type Pokemon, and I just... I don't think it's very likely that he brings Azelf and Mega Pidgeot and Heracross and Excadrill. If he brings Azelf, he probably won't bring Mega Pidgeot. If he brings Mega Pidgeot, probably not Azelf. Maybe he'll bring Tentacool or uh, Tangrowth. The bottom three, not that he couldn't bring them. He has brought all of them to at least one game. The Frostlass and the Lipard both hit, um, both hit Cresselia super effectively. Uh, in the case of Frostlass, uh, the ice coverage is actually pretty good against the combination of Nidoking, Zapdos, and Latias. He doesn't know that I'm bringing those Pokemon, but as it turns out, I am. Uh, the Licky Licky, it's bulky, and he could use it just to try and make his team bulkier, but it doesn't fare very well against the Choice Band uh, Entei if he thinks that I'm bringing that. Uh, the Lipard, again, it's it's dark. It's got a lot of... It's got a deep move pool. You never really know what it's going to do. Typically, it's kind of an annoyer. It can mess with walls and things by uh, clicking Encore. Um, it has Prankster T-Wave. It's a Prankster Mon. It's a Prankster Mon. Um, I don't know a lot about I don't. I don't see Lipard coming, to be honest. Uh, it doesn't. It's not strong enough even to break through some of my psychics. So let's go over the team I'm bringing. Zap Zap is running a much more offensive set this week. It's still max HP, but it's got enough speed to outspeed a Jolly Max Speed Excadrill, uh, not in the sand. So if it opts to run Sand Force, I'll know that immediately. And uh, barring it being Scarfed, I can outspeed it with Zap Zap. I, I, there's no way he runs Scarf on that Excadrill. Uh, if I'm being honest, because it makes it very easy for me to wall. Lots of the Pokemon on my team can handle Excadrill if I know it's locked into a move, which is why I don't think you can afford to do that. Uh, it's running Thunderbolt, Heat Wave, Hidden Power, Water, and Roost. Thunderbolt, of course, just a, a nice powerful stab. Heat Wave um, hits super effectively. The combination of Heat Wave and Hidden Power Water hits super effectively anything that resists the Thunderbolt. So uh, I like this as its move set. It's got Roost there to uh, Roost back a little HP. It is kind of bulky, and it can still survive a three-hit KO from the Mega Pidgeot. So uh, it still serves as my primary Mega Pidgeot check. It remains a decent switch into several other Mons, uh, and can outspeed non-Scarf varieties of his uh, primary Wall Breakers. The red one is Psychic, Surf, Defog, and Roost. The coverage of Psychic and Surf um, is very good against his team. Psychic is just a nice neutral damage on most things. The things that resist it on his team are the Azelf, the Lipard, and the um, Excadrill. I don't predict all three of those things to come, but Surf hits the Excadrill super effectively. So that uh, allows me to predict switches. It makes it very safe if he's thinking that my coverage are my stab moves only and that I'm Defog Roost. Uh, I could hit, use that to my advantage and hit the Excadrill on the switch. Um, he could also break Ice Beam if he sees me using it against the Hippowdon, and then I actually end up going for Surf and hit what would otherwise be a neutral hit on the Excadrill as a super effective hit. Uh, Decisions is running Assault Vest, Sacred Fire, Extreme Speed, Stone Edge, Flame Charge. Um, with enough speed, here's the thing, it, it has enough speed to outspeed Adamant varieties of his slower Mon. But unfortunately, a max speed Jolly Excadrill outspeeds me if I'm Adamant max speed on myself. So uh, for that reason, I opted to go for a slightly different speed tier just to try and outspeed max speed investments uh, of their adamant natures and things like that. So I can use that to my advantage. I can use the diversity in the speed tiers that I've created. As you can see here, I've got 155 there, 131 there, 141 there to really hammer down that uh, 80s range speed tier because you've got a lot of Pokemon that hit that speed tier. So it'll be useful for me to try and scout that out. Sacred Fire, of course, to try and net burns on the Hippowdon, and uh, the only other likely switch to that is the Rotom H. Typically, I run a Choice Band Entes. I'll try and use that to my advantage because this will allow me to switch to Stone Edge to try and take on uh, that Rotom Heat. Moving on to DDG, I have the Psychic, Hidden Power Water, Calm Mind, and Moonlight. 
Uh, this set has gone through various iterations, and I opted to go for the set I went for now because uh, of substitutes. There is a chance... Uh, in my playtesting with my front office, I noticed that substitute sword stance excadrill is kind of a problem if I don't have a way to break the sub on DDG. So if I were to, say, um, be in there, I would have to set up a calm mine, maybe even two calm mines in order to break a sub with Psychic. And that gives him a turn to Swords Dance, and then I can't really wall his X Scissor at that point. I tried a sub variety where I just spam Substitute through his Life Orb damage, but if he's not Life Orb, that becomes a problem. Uh, Moonlight's not very good in the sand, so unfortunately, this could set up Doom for my team if he's a if he's got a Substitute on the Excadrill. So instead, I'm just going to go for a much more offensive variant. DDG's role here is kind of a uh, it's same as it was last time I played against the Paratidas. The bulk is useful against his team because he has a difficult time hitting hard enough out the gate to take on my Mons. In order to take down DDG with some of his primary offensive threats, he needs to be able to set up with them, or he needs to have choice bands on them, and that does not bode well for him. Uh, a choice banded Earthquake Mold Breaker Excadrill can do a decent amount of damage to my Cresselia, which is why I'm running max HP, max defense for it. Primarily for the Excadrill. In the past, Excadrill was not a problem for me, but I did lose the Pokemon that would primarily wall it, which is Chestnut. So I had to think outside the box. Prince is here because it two-hit KOs most of his team. It's a good bring regardless of whether he brings the Tentacruel or the, uh, or the Tangrowth defensively. If he brings it offensively, then I'll, I'll have to kind of scout that out and play around it. It's got Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Ice Beam, Surf. I was considering Stealth Rock, but there's very few circumstances I would actually go for it. And uh, I, I imagine he's going to want to keep rocks on the field against me. He tried to do that very aggressively last time we played. It uh, threatens the Entei and the Zap Zap. So I didn't really want to mess around with that too much. Uh, I just wanted the better coverage. Ice Beam is there because the hardest hitting move I have for the Hippowdon. Modest Life Orb Sheer Forced Ice Beam can pretty much take that Hippowdon out. It's like 80 to 106%, something like that. 86 to 105. I don't remember exactly. I have the calcs written down. So it's a it, when I predict the how the Hippowdon to come in, I can switch into Prince. It's also any most of the time I predict the Hippowdon to come in. There's a really good chance that it's actually the Rotom that's coming in. And Sludge Wave and Surf both hit those things incredibly hard also. Uh, Surf is also good if I'm not sure whether it's going to be Excadrill or Hippowdon. Perhaps if there's some shenanigans going on with the predictions of coverage moves, then Surf is a good way to hit. I mean, it's good against his whole team. Water coverage is good on his whole team. That's why I have it on uh, more than half of my Pokemon. So that's the reason for that. Max speed with max special attack just forces the speed tie um, on an adamant Heracross if it's not scarfed. And then Hugh Grant is my final bring. Uh, he is now my answer to Heracross and literally the only thing that can take on Heracross. But it's a counter to Heracross. It's not a check. It's a counter. This thing will beat Heracross. There is no combination of coverage moves that the Heracross can get that will take on this Hugh Grant bull. Um, even if I get the dumb luck of somehow getting a status on it and its guts and its choice band, it still cannot to hit KO Hugh Grant who can then proceed to Oko with Play Rough. So Play Rough, Earthquake, Stone Edge, Heal Bell. Uh, the Earthquake will hit super effective on the Excadrill. The Excadrill could be packing Iron Head, uh, which will be able to two hit KO the Grand Bull. And some varieties of the Excadrill, namely Sand Force varieties, can 2-hit KO with the Earthquake also. But um, I still think that this coverage is good. The Stone Edge is to cover anything that would resist or be immune to the Earthquake, which is the Rotom Heat and the Mega Pidgeot. So that is my team, guys. Um, do you guys have any questions, any thoughts? Uh, one of the big things to think about this week was whether or not I should bring Ditto. I think the fear of setup risk discourages a lot of people to bring setup. He doesn't have any really good setup options on his team outside of the Swords Dance on Excadrill, but Excadrill is going to be finding a difficult time buying turns against my team already because I have so many um, attacking options on my team here and pretty much if he's willing to sh reveal the Excadrill I'm willing to try and take a stab at killing it 
uh, because a lot of my mon aren't one hit KO by it, so if I'm at a decent amount of health, I can survive it. So that's why I didn't bring Ditto this week. Uh, Mega Absol, too easy for my opponent to wall. If he plays uh, protectively on his defensive threats, then I'm not in a great situation. And a lot of his offensive threats, even if I do outspeed them, um, I won't kill in one hit, and he can kind of kill me back. Uh, the Excadrill does outspeed in the sand, so it, it felt more risky than it was worth, and it's not a good switch in. I feel pretty comfortable finding an opportunity to switch in any of these Pokemon. It's bulky, it's going to be hard for him to break through, and I have Heal Bell on Hugh Grant this week, so he can't just be throwing Toxics around and hoping to whittle me that way. Um, so I just got to play around that as best I can and use all of my uh, tools to my advantage. This is going to be a team battle this time, guys. It's not it's not one singular focus for a win condition because it really depends on the flow of things. If he's playing very aggressively and constantly switching in his offensive threats, then the name of the game is going to be uh, Outlast and Chip. Um, if he's playing very defensively and keeping making it difficult for me to switch in my offensive threats, then it's going to have to be my bulk versus his, and I think I win that ma that matchup. So I just got to play smart, and I got to try and use that to my advantage. But uh, battle is ready to go. Uh, Tup's kind of been very patient with me here. So um, uh, I'm going to see you guys later, and hopefully all these videos will be up when I get home from work today. As always, my name is Gym Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.